So, you want a new father. Arlecchino is coming up very soon, like in a few days, or if you're watching this in the future, Arlecchino has your attention and you really want to get her. So let's jump straight into it with this Arlecchino pre-farming guide. Let's start off with her kit. Arlecchino's kit is, in layman's terms, extremely similar to Hu Tao. Like, way, way too similar to Hu Tao. But some things make her very much different. Specifically, her exclusive debuff and the Bond of Life mechanic that coincides with her damage. So, how will this all work? And how is this different enough that I would go for Arlecchino rather than Hu Tao? Well, let me explain by going through her kit. Arlecchino's normal attack is 6 consecutive hits like normal, but her charged attack allows her to fly like Scaramouche for 3 seconds as long as you hold the button. However, Arlecchino has a passive hidden in her basic attack, aka the Mask of the Red Death. When Arlecchino has a bond of life equal to or greater than 20% of her max HP, she will enter the Mask of the Red Death state where her normal charged and plunging attacks will be converted to deal pyro damage. This cannot be overridden. When in the Mask of the Red Death state, Arlecchino's normal attacks will deal extra damage to opponents on hit that scales off her attack multiplied by a certain ratio of her current Bond of Life percentage. This will consume 6.5% of said current Bond of Life. Her Bond of Life can be consumed this way every 0.05 seconds. So, when her Bond of Life is consumed in this manner, all his Ashes cooldown, which is basically her skills cooldown, will decrease by 0.8 seconds. This state is where you want your Arlecchino to go by every single time in combat. But how can you reach this state? We'll get to that in a bit. Her skill, All is Ash, is a very important piece of her kit as it acts as an opener to her combos. She deals pyro damage to multiple nearby opponents and performs a dash cleave against one of them, dealing AoE pyro damage. Opponents hit by the skill will have the Blood Death Directive debuff. That's hard to say. Uh, Blood Death Directive lasts for 30 seconds. Every 5 seconds, it will deal 1 instance of pyro damage to the opponent, maximum of 2 instances. This damage will be considered elemental skill damage. When Arlecchino uses a Charge Attack or Bale Moon Rising, which is her ult, she will absorb and clear nearby Blood Death Directives. Each directive absorbed grants her a Bond of Life worth 40% of her max HP. The maximum value of the Bond of Life she can be granted through Blood Death Directives within 35 seconds after using her Elemental Skill is 80% of her max HP. Using the elemental skill again during this duration will restart the count on duration and the limit on the value of Bond of Life she may gain from the Blood Death Directives. The only real knock here is the skill cooldown which lasts for 30 seconds. However, if you go crazy with her and deal more damage in the Red Death State with basic attacks, charging attacks, and plunging attacks, you will decrease the cooldown of her skill practically seamlessly. And then we have her ultimate, Bale Moon Rising. Here, she deals AoE Pyro damage before clearing the cooldown of her skill and healing her. The healing is based on her Bond of Life value and attack. So basically, the ultimate is very similar to Hu Tao. Deals AoE Pyro damage and heals herself. It's just that there is additional healing thanks to her Bond of Life and attack. However, the crazy part is due to Arlecchino's initial passive, Cinders Alone Shall Nourish. While in combat, Arlecchino gains 40% pyro damage bonus, but she can only be healed through Bale Moon Rising. So basically, she has a built-in pyro damage bonus, but at the cost of only being healed from her ultimate. Another passive is Agony Alone May Be Repaid, which basically provides additional effects for Blood Depth Directive. This is primarily meant to increase the bond of life you gain after 5 seconds of applying it to enemies, but you haven't absorbed it yet. And her final passive, Strength Alone Can Defend, where Arlecchino gains 1% all elemental and physical resistance for every 100 attacks she has in excess of 1,000. The maximum res increase she can gain this way for each is 20%, which basically makes Arlecchino much tankier. So based on this kit, everything is going to be centered on Blood Death Directive and the Bond of Life mechanic, and you have no use of healers since Arlecchino heals herself with her ultimate. 
In addition, the bond of life will decrease if you gain healing, so it's recommended that you have absolutely no healers in your team, which means shielders will be very important for durability or off-field DPS characters for more offense. For her talent priority, I recommend placing her normal attack as your first priority, then her ultimate, and then her skill. Her normal attack is her main way of dealing damage. Her ult has unbelievable AoE burst damage, and her skill is her enabler for her enhanced state, where you can absorb the directives. But if you want real advice, triple crown her. There you go. For combos, I recommend starting with her skill. Then, you swap to other characters like Shangling and Bennett and use their buffs or off-field setup. Then, charge attack to absorb the directives, then continuously spam her basic attacks and her ult. Or, alternatively, you can start off with her skill, then swap to other characters for buff or off-field setup, then use her ult, skill again, charge attack, then go crazy. For team setups, like I said earlier, no healers as much as possible. So you can try out mono pyro teams like Arlie, Shangling, Bennett, and Dia. I know I said no healers, but Bennett is more for attack buffing than healing, so you'll have to build him for that role. You can also go for vape teams like Arlie, Shangling, Yalan, and a flex option. I went for Yalan since Xingxiu's swords can heal her, which reduces her bond of life bar. But if that's not an issue since you built Xingxiu with all attack and crit, then go ahead, Yalan will not be necessary, or just put him with Yalan. The flex slot can go for either another buffer or an off-field like Bennett, Farina, or Fischl, or you can go for a crowd controller like Kazuha or Sucrose, or a shielder like Zhongli or Toma. Honestly, there's lots of really good options for this flex slot, so go with what's best. For theme teams like All Fatui or All House of the Hearth, they aren't good. They, they're just not good. They, they're just not. But go ahead and have fun with them if you want. But for Spiral Abyss, I don't recommend you use this team. For weapons, her best is obviously her signature, the Crimson Moon Semblance, giving high attack and a crit rate substat. This weapon's effect grants a bond of life equal to 18% of max HP when a charged attack hits an opponent. So this effect can be triggered up to once every 14 seconds. In addition, when the equipping character has a bond of life, they gain a 12% damage bonus. But if the value of the bond of life is greater than or equal to 20% of max HP, then they gain an additional 24% damage bonus, which means that in total, you gain 36% damage bonus. But if you aren't lucky or interested with a different weapon, Dragon's Bane can help since it further increases your pyro damage, but it uses elemental mastery, so vape teams will be best used for that. Another one is Missive Windspear if you have it. It's also primarily for vape teams since it further increases your attack and elemental mastery. A farmable option would be Prototype Star Glitter, similarly for vape teams like before. A free-to-play option would be White Tassel, since it has a crit rate substat and further increases your normal attacks while also being relatively easy to refine. However, the attack increase is the worst since it's a 3-star weapon. For artifacts, her best in slot is yet to come with Fragment of Harmonic Whimsy, which gives her a typical attack increase for her 2-piece, but her 4-piece really shines. With the effect, when the value of a Bond of Life increases or decreases, this character deals 18% increased damage for 6 seconds, max 3 stacks. And considering that her Bond of Life fluctuates like crazy, Arlequino can get these 3 stacks practically instantly, which means if you fluctuate your Bond of Life, you will gain 54% increased damage for 6 seconds. However, if you aren't lucky enough to get the best stats for her best in slot, then Gladiator set would be a very good alternative since it increases her attack and her normal attack damage by 35%, which is equivalent to two stacks of her previous artifact set. And since Gladiator set is usually available at all times, I'm pretty sure that if you're an experienced player, you already have her best artifacts until you farm for her best in slot. Speaking of farming, let's go for her materials. Her level ascension's bonus stat is crit damage, so it's best to get her to level 90 as soon as possible. As for ascension materials, you will need 1 pyro pieces, 9 pyro shards, 9 pyro chunks, and 6 pyro gemstones. 
You can get them from Pyro Registvine and Hypostasis, Matrix of Overseer, Primo Gia Bishop, all the weekly bosses, and the new boss coming up. You will also need 18 Recruit, 30 Sergeant, and 36 Lieutenant Insignias, which you can get from any Fatui enemy in the overworld. However, the best ones to get are from the Skirmishers since they drop them more often than Agents or Mages. Not only that, but you'll also need to get 168 Rainbow Roses. That's not really a bad thing considering that they are everywhere in Fontaine and you can even grow them in your Serena Teapot. It's just that it's 168, so the number is very, very big. But if you have been farming or have been grinding them for a very long time, it's actually super duper easy to get. And finally, 46 of Golden Melody Fragments from the new boss. Her skill ascension needs the teachings of order, which is basically the scrolls of Fontaine with the X's on them. Kinda reminds me of her eyes. Which you can farm every Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday. So make sure you condense your resin after Sunday and Thursday. You will also need 3 teachings, 21 guides, and 38 philosophies of order. Next is the Fatui Insignia. You will need 6 recruit, 22 sergeant, and 31 lieutenant insignias. And finally, you will need 6 of these candles from her knave boss fight. Mind you, this is per skill. So there is going to be a lot of adventuring and a lot of grinding for you to do if you want to maximize her skills. As for her signature weapon, you will need 5 broken, 14 black, 14 silver, and 6 gold pristine sea goblets, which you can farm every Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday. Then, 15 common, 23 green, and 27 blue gears, which you can get after beating up a bunch of Gardamex and such. And finally, 23 common, 27 uncommon, and 41 rare of these new materials, which I'm assuming is a part of the new area the new boss is in. Her constellations are also really good to kind of absurd. Her C1 basically increases the overall value of her Mask of the Red Death State by 120%, while also giving her interruption resistance when she is using her normal attacks while in the enhanced state. Her C2 is, frankly, absurd. Blood Depth Directives are now Blood Depth Dew when first applied. When Arlequino absorbs such a Dew, she unleashes Bale Moon Bloodfire in front of her, dealing... 900% of her attack as area of effect pyro damage. This effect can trigger once every 10 seconds. So basically, Arlequino has a blast attack when she absorbs the blood debt. It's basically a passive way of dealing damage and 900% of her attack, which basically means if you have 2000 attack on her, she deals 18,000 pyro damage. And that's not even counting the pyro damage bonus or crits. That's nice. Her C3 increases her normal attacks level by 3, which is usual. Her C4, when Arlequino successfully absorbs a blood death directive, Bale Moon Rising's cooldown will decrease by 2 seconds and 15 energy will be restored to her. This effect can occur every 10 seconds, which basically gives her a lot of energy and decreases the cooldown of her ult. Her C5 increases her ult's level by 3 like normal, and finally her C6. The damage of her ult is increased by Arlequino's attack, multiplied by 700% of Arlequino's current life bond percentage. For 20 seconds after Arlequino uses her skill, both her normal attacks and ultimate gain 10% increased crit rate and 70 increased crit damage. 70. S 70. This effect can be triggered up to 15 seconds. It's fitting for a C6, and this is stupidly good. So what are my thoughts on Arlequino? Well, she's busted, and if you want to invest in her more, she rewards you for it. Her C2 is disgustingly good, and her C6 is very fitting for a C6, especially that crit damage increase. If you have godly artifact luck, her on level 90, her C6 and team enhancements, Arlequino has the potential to be the first Genshin character to reach 300% crit damage while also having at least 50% crit rate. This is very stupid, but also it's really good. It's wow, it's really, really good. Are you gonna pull for her? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel with post notifications on. 
Shout out to Max Monado for the support. Also, may your pulls be lucky and blessed. And as always, I'm Hermit Grab, and I'll see you soon.